They're here because they're outraged. But it's hard to tell who they're more furious with, Israel or the British government. The protests here are reminiscent of demonstrations that took place outside the Israeli embassy four years ago during Israel's last major attack on Gaza. The difference this time is that the British government's support for Israel is even more pronounced. And protesters say that support is in contrast to general public opinion. The British government knows very well what public opinion is in this country. Public opinion supports Palestinian rights. It supports justice. It supports peace. It does not support what William Hague is saying. William Hague, the British foreign minister, has laid the blame for the current Israeli bombing of Gaza and the resulting deaths of civilians squarely on the shoulders of Hamas. Hamas bears principal responsibility for this current crisis. I utterly condemn rocket attacks from Gaza into southern Israel by Hamas and other armed groups. This creates an intolerable situation for Israeli civilians in southern Israel who have the right to live without fear of attack from Gaza. He failed to condemn Israel's attacks which have killed children and civilians as well as members of Hamas and protesters say both the British government and the British mainstream media have misrepresented the timeline of events to portray what's happening as Israeli retaliation and as a fair fight. Israel, the fourth largest military power in the world, armed and supported by the biggest military powers in the world, armed with F-16s, armed with Predator drones, armed with missiles, armed with tanks. There is no equivalence between the Israeli state and the Palestinian resistance. The West are showing no respect for the Palestinian people by the presentation of their cause on their media, by the treatment of the Palestinian people and standing idly by while bombs rain down on those poor people in Gaza City and other places. This is a battle between David and Goliath and we are on the side of David and you, the oppressors, the exploiters, the armourers, the Tory government, you are on the side of the oppressors. I asked the protesters whether they felt a sense of futility returning to the same spot to protest another Israeli attack while their government ignored their views. The government's position is waning, it has no back, it doesn't hold water. The whole world now, and it shows on the social media, on Twitter sphere and the such, it's showing that more and more people are seeing through the lies, through the smoke screen, through the propaganda. And therefore, the governments of the West, mighty as they may be, but actually in terms of a, a popular support, they are on their own in this. We're seeing Israel being more and more isolated. It may still have powerful friends in powerful places and in high offices, but on the streets, around the world, even in the media, it's losing, it's hemorrhaging support. And bit by bit, we are seeing some new faces join the struggle in order to see Palestine free and dignified. There have been several protests outside the Israeli embassy over the past few days. And on occasion, there's been a smaller pro-Israeli counter-protest. Tensions have risen and the two groups have been separated by the police. But Jews are split across both sides here, and the protests in solidarity with Gaza have boasted the presence of several diverse Jewish groups, much to the annoyance of some pro-Israelis, one of whom tried to stop Jews joining the Palestine protest and then took a swing at our camera after he failed. And despite his efforts, Jews opposing Israel's policies are making sure their voices are heard. End the occupation, end the house demolitions, 27,000 demolitions since 1967, that's over 10 a week, every week for 45 years. End the settlements, establish civil rights and human rights and justice for Palestinians. Israel often claims that it has the support of Jews the world over for what it's doing, but it doesn't. It, it abuses sympathy of Jews the world over for, for Israel when it came into being, and it abuses that to say that 
all Jews are behind what it's doing and many are not. We are in touch with a number of Jewish groups around the world who are also protesting in different ways. And one of our ways of, of protesting is to be here today in solidarity with Palestinians alongside Palestinians. Similar actions have been held up and down the country. This one took place in Scotland, starting in the shadow of Edinburgh Castle and ending at the Scottish Parliament. Others took to the streets with or without cameras watching in dozens of other towns and cities. Back in London, the protests are set to continue as long as Israel's bombs keep falling. Hassan Ghani for The Real News, London.